to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today, guys, I have a piece from another new Australian watch company to feature and review for you. Yes, it's been quite interesting seeing a number of Australian companies come to the fore in the last few months, six months or so. Always interested to see what Aussie companies have to offer, of course, because I'm based right here in Western Australia. Uh, so the watch today is from Australis and it comes in this very substantial packaging. I got to say, this is the most solid plastic packaging that I have yet seen from a micro brand. So I'm quite impressed with this. Um, now, Australis uh, is founded by a guy named Vios. He reached out to me and he's explained that he wants to come out offering great quality pieces with original design at extremely affordable prices. So, you know, we'll see whether uh, that brief is actually met in this review. So without further ado, let's flip the camera around and take a closer look at this watch. All right, guys, so here we have the packaging on the table here. And uh, as I mentioned, very solid uh, impact plastic packaging. You know, this is designed to be waterproof and in reference to the dive style design of this particular watch. So pretty, you know, really quite solid feeling. And, you know, these locking mechanisms click very solidly. And inside here, it's covered in foam. And here is the stuff that it comes in. So they will come with a full instruction uh, manual. And this is, of course, a warranty card that kind of they've provided as a placeholder in this prototype. Two years is what they will be going for. Microfiber cleaning cloth. Those are the links I've removed. And you can see there's six links there that I've taken off this watch. Uh, now, uh, this will come with a number of other options, including uh, leather straps. Okay, so this is uh, the one that's been put in the packaging. Uh, kind of a suede leather but you know there will be a number of other options he's kind of sent me uh, a few kind of examples right different types different styles uh, even uh, where is it this one different style buckle and i imagine these will be made available in different options for people who purchase the watch uh, at least one strap i i think will come with the watch on bracelet okay so let's just take it out of the packaging and put that aside now to show you guys the watch in more detail. So guys, right here we have the Australis Barrier Reef Automatic Diver. The initial target price on Kickstarter, uh, they will be targeting $300 or less, but of course, check out the links below for updates, uh, you know, websites and landing pages and what have you. I will try to put the most updated information down the bottom for you guys. Uh, this is of course in blue, but it will be available in also in black and green versions, as well as date versus no date for a total of six different combinations. Okay guys, let's just talk about the movement uh, now as I do like to do next. So in here is the Seiko NH series movement and uh, I think kudos to them for using an NH38A instead of the, you know, the more easy to get uh, 35A because this is a no date watch. So they've gone with a no date movement which is fully appropriate and appreciated. Stats down the left side there, you've seen this movement before. Uh, the rated accuracy minus 20 plus 40, but in this case in the last uh, week or so that I've had this it's been running about plus four plus five seconds per day which is really quite good I'm pleased that uh, you know they've regulated this to that level of accuracy okay so let's just talk about the case here the case here is 43.5 millimeters diameter as I've measured it with calipers the bezel itself is measuring 44 millimeters across and you know just look at the side here you can see the bezel is slightly wider than the case itself. It is covered in an anti-scratch coating or at least the production versions will have an anti-scratch coating or scratch resistant coating. Uh, it, it's not exactly specified what that is, but it does say that it's about half the hardness of sapphire. Uh, so I presume it's some sort of micron coating uh, that, you know, that you've seen in other watches as well. Uh, thickness is 14 millimeters, you know, to the top of the glass there. Uh, lug width, as you might expect, is 22 uh, millimeters. Production versions will come with drilled lugs as well. This prohibitive hasn't had the drilled lugs inserted. Uh, lug to lug distance between my thumbs uh, is 49 millimeters, which is actually smaller than most watches you would expect, you know, pushing 44 millimeters in diameter. 
This one, they've deliberately kept the lugs relatively short and turned down pretty quickly. Uh, the overall weight with the six slings I showed you removed is actually 190 grams, so pretty substantial. If you're gonna put all six slings in, it is definitely over 200 grams in total. So substantial weight on this watch. Finishing wise, it is almost completely brushed. Okay, so just going through the, the surfaces here, the top of the bezel is circular brushed. Uh, the side surfaces are vertical brushed. Uh, it does have one polished surface on the under surface of the bezel there. Hopefully that comes through in camera. You can see that reflection on the under surface of the bezel. And then uh, the case itself, longitudinal brushing on the top of the lugs, as well as longitudinal on the side. It, there isn't a polished bevel, at least not on this prototype. Uh, the bottom is circular brushing, and that includes the screw down case back. Uh, and that screw down case back, you can see there with that rather nice stamped seahorse. I would like to see more uh, detail around the seahorse in the production models. There is a bit of empty space there, uh, I think, which can be nicely filled in with more detail uh, if they so, so choose to go that way. Okay, so with that uh, screw down case back and screw down sign crown with that uh, Australis logo there, uh, the overall water resistance that this watch will be offering is 300 meters, so a full dive capable water resistance there. Okay, so let's just move on to the dial now. The dial here is, hopefully it will come through in the camera here, it's a sunburst blue, a pretty nice sunburst blue dial with an applied logo at the 12 o'clock position. Now that logo, of course, is the Stylize A for the Australis brand, but it's also a little bit of an inspiration from the Boomerang, another Australian icon. All right, it's got 12 applied indices, or I guess 13 if you count two indices at the 12 o'clock uh, position there. Uh, printed words for you know barrier reef uh, automatic and the water resistance rating uh, at the six o'clock position and around the sunburst is a white uh, chapter ring there so that kind of offsets the size of the dial here to make it a little bit more moderate and, and i like that choice actually i do like the the use of the white chapter ring around the dial uh, the hands are polished steel uh, you know, obelisk, I suppose you call that. I'm not sure what you would call uh, that particular shape. Hands, it does have a rectangular loom spot uh, on the second hand there. And BGW9 loom is used on all the usual spots as well as the full bezel. It's completely loomed all around that bezel. Loom shot right here for you guys to see how it looks like in the dark. Okay, surrounding uh, the dial there is a 120 click unidirectional dive style bezel with a ceramic insert and a pretty well done ceramic insert, I have to say. So let's just hear how it uh, sounds now. Three, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. So actually it's fairly tight and also uh, relatively soft. Once you get going, it's easy to turn, but initially it does uh, stick a bit, but you know, again, this is a prototype. Five, or five there, I think, so 20 clicks there. So again, it, it, it sticks a bit, but once it gets going, uh, it's actually quite easy to turn. You can see I'm just, I'm just turning it now. Just the initial bit, you need to get it going, uh, at, least, at least in this particular prototype that I have in hand here. Okay, 120 clicks all the way around, and then it's a flat sapphire crystal on top. Uh, in production models, it will come with four layers of anti-reflective coating. In this case, actually, the anti-reflective coating is already not bad at all, you know, no complaints about the legibility and clarity here. Okay, moving on to the bracelet, and the bracelet uh, is, you know, its own design, right? It's not oyster or anything. It's got this, uh, I guess, polygonal, you know, cross section on the links there, right? Three piece per link, right? Solid end links, and, uh, and you know, pleasing to say that it actually has a screw link adjustment on the bracelet. Uh, he's gone for screw links on the bracelet. And the finishing is completely brushed again, longitudinal brushing on the surfaces of the links as well as the side, as well as the underside if you look at the underside there. Okay, so that's the finishing uh, on that particular bracelet. It does taper to uh, 20 millimeters, so 22 to 20 millimeters at the narrower portion there. Uh, the clasp itself is a milled clasp. Okay, that's what it's gonna be. Uh, with a very solid dive extension. Uh, and in this case, it does have six holes on the side, but because of that extension, it's really four of those holes 
that are going to be actually functional. If you put it in the last two, it actually doesn't close up completely because of that way that dive extension falls in. All right, push button release, solid deployment arms. That's what it is. In production, Australis are going to make a uh, glide lock or ratcheting class available as an option. And I imagine that most people will probably want to go for that. That one will also have micro adjustment on either side of the class as well. So, you know, personally, I would probably go with the ratcheting class option myself. Okay, so that's the description of the watch. Let's just snap it on now for the wrist shot for you guys. And there we have it. So remember, the Australis Barrier Reef here is a large watch, 43.5 millimeter diameter or 44 on the bezel. But because of the way it's designed, you know, relatively short lugs, you know, female end links that, and it turns down pretty quickly. It sits pretty well even on my 17 centimeter wrist, which I, I don't have a large wrist so by any means, but you know, it, it kind of sits all right despite the size. So kudos on them for the design that they've gone for there. And that's how it sits on the wrist, 14 millimeter thickness there. Okay. All right. So that's the watch. What have I particularly enjoyed uh, about this watch? Look, I, I think it's actually a very solid tool style diver uh, with ground up original design and you know as i've mentioned it wears smaller despite the size thanks to the short lug design as well as those female end links which allow the you know the first link to turn directly downward rather than sticking out the side of the watch here uh, and overall i would say that it's got pretty darn good specs for the value for the price that they will be going for you got a seiko nh movement sapphire crystal ceramic bezel micron coated protection on the case you know, Super Luminova BGW9, screw links on the baselet with uh, solid end links and, you know, what a class that as it is, is pretty solid, but with the ratcheting option would be an even better class. You know, overall, I think, you know, every bit of this watch is actually solid and the case is of good quality, I have to say. And, you know, what are the obvious weaknesses? Keeping in mind that this is still a prototype. Well, look, I, I think uh, the thing that won't change is the case size. Right, 43.5, 44 on the bezel, uh, and that 14 millimeter thickness, it kind of precludes this from formal use. I, I do like to wear a lot of my divers with you know shirt and tie. This one probably doesn't quite get away with it because really it's it's really much more of a tool design, and that's fine. This this is what they've gone for a straight up full-blooded diver. Uh, some may find the weight, you know, 190 grams adjusted, or two, more than 200 grams with or the bracelet links in some might not like that right that's actually a very substantial weight and you know you will not forget that this is on your wrist unlike lighter watches you know you may find that a lot more comfortable so, so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to get this on bracelet and not change it to rubber or whatever else um, i think the brushing right can do with more passes when they come to production uh, the the most noticeable parts are the top of the lugs as well as that end link, right? Not, not the finest brushing. Uh, there's some waviness in the, the finishing here. So that's probably the weakest bits. Other bits are not quite as noticeable, but again, I think can do with one or two more passes in terms of attention to the detail there. And that's really it, you know, not much to complain about. Uh, overall, uh, some people have come up and said that this is a little bit derivative, a little bit generic. Some people have said that this looks a bit like a Z loss design. Well, you know, I, I think that this doesn't actually have exactly the same parts as any other watch that I'm aware of. Uh, if you, if you look at this watch and you know it's exactly the same as any other, let me know. And, you know, that's something that we can, uh, reconsider or comment about. Overall, it is actually rather hard to come up with a fully original looking dive watch. You're always going to have elements that, you know, seem to be taken from elsewhere. Uh, but as far as I know, you know, all of this is actually ground up design. So there we go. My comments and thoughts on this watch. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys, my review of the inaugural piece from Australis, the Barrier Reef Dive Watch. Let me know what you think about this. You know, I think there is actually a lot to like about it. Certainly there are original design elements in this watch. I think there's very little doubt about it. And at the price that they are targeting, I think it's actually quite difficult to find a piece that matches 
all the specs that they are going for. So, so let me know your thoughts. I'm very interested to hear your views on how compelling this value may be to you and uh, you know what you think about the design. I really do wish them all the best as they move on to kickstarting this very soon. And I will of course put all details that I can find in the description as they come along. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. Put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.